everybody. This is Joe Hennis from up at fansitetoughpigs.com. And this is Matt Vogel from Below the Frame with Matt Vogel. So exciting that we are here <laughs> together <laughs> doing this uh, very strange and uh, experimental collaboration between yeah. uh, the fans and the, the, the official fans. I don't know which one I am and which I one don't, you are. I, I don't, well, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what I am at all. I'm just You're, here. You, you know, are I'm just here. a Muppet performer. You're a Muppet performer. You're also, you are also a fan. Absolutely. Fair. Yes, um, I'm definitely I'm, a fan of the Muppets. I'm only a fan. I don't, I don't get to put a puppet on my arm at all. At least not that we know of. Mm, that's another podcast. <laughs> but, uh, so if, if you are listening to this on Below the Frame, um, uh, you could also watch this as a video over on ToughPigs.com. And if you're watching this on Tough Pigs, you can listen to this as a podcast with Below the Frame. We're covering both audio and visual right at once, at once. But you'll have to, they're separate things. They're separate, but they're exactly the same. They're exactly, although I think your, your video will have no audio. Right, yeah, so you'll have to hit play at the same time. Yeah, Just and my on. audio will have no video. So it'll, it'll work out in the end of the day. <laughs> but um, what we're here, we're here talking about, you know, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but it's been a couple weeks now. But I don't want to give any spoilers away that uh, a certain Muppet was on a certain competitive singing show and was revealed to be the, like, under, under the mask. I mean, that's as far as I can go without giving anything away. But so now if you have, if you have not seen that and know not what I speak of and you're still interested in that s- competitive singing show, go away from this and come back to it later. Right. Right. And if you <laughs> legitimately have no idea what we're talking about, so then just be prepared for some spoilers. It's possible. It's possible. Yes. Um, but uh, it was probably enough time for people to uh, exit this interview. Uh, so we'll just say I it. Think so. Matt, yeah. Kermit the Frog, and therefore you, were the, one of the surprise guests on The Masked Singer. That's right. It was the season five premiere, and it aired, uh, I guess, last Wednesday. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a big surprise. I, I, can't, I, I can't even tell you how big of a surprise it was. But it was a huge surprise, not only obviously to the people on the show, but to the I think to the Muppet fans out there as well. Yeah, to everyone, to to Muppet fans, to Mass Singer fans, to the Mass Singer judges, they were they were shook after yes. that. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, but they were. I have a million questions, and uh, right. it's it's such a fascinating concept for a TV show. So I feel like there's a lot of insight that you can give just about the making of what you are allowed to reveal, the making of the Mass Singer. I hope um, so. I hope I'll be able to give you some good tidbits because it was super crazy. It was one of the weirdest things that I've ever done. That but it was also very awesome. Something. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it was. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with. Um, so the very first thing is you get a call. Who who got who did you get a call from? Suggesting okay, to be on the show. So I got actually I got a text first, and the text said, "Can I call you?" And it was from Michael Steinbach, who is our uh, production manager at the Muppet Studio. And I said, "Okay." I called Michael, and he said, "I cannot reveal this in an email, but the mass singer is very interested in having Kermit be one of the, the singers." And I was like, really? And he said, yeah, yeah. You know, they've got this snail costume that they're working on that will kind of look like a smaller person might be in it or something along those lines. And uh, we're kind of trying to look for a way to kind of make this collaboration work. And I was very interested. That sounded like a lot of fun to me. And so it was it was all in code names. I don't want to reveal the code name because it's probably the code name of stuff stuff that you know doesn't involve me but uh so we just kind of referred to it as the fox show because it's on fox and uh and they only referred to kermit as snail so we had team snail and team snail was was myself was michael steinbach and, and the muppet studio of course and then there were some people from the fox show that also you know they had their own i, I think each contestant has their own team of producers of of PAs of of everything you know and so nobody outside in theory nobody outside of that little uh circle of people knows who the celebrity is wow i think maybe the costume designers might know or something i'm i'm not exactly sure to my knowledge no one really knew 
who the celebrity <laughs> was other than this little insulated team, team snail. So I had my own uh, vocal coach. I had, uh, you know, there were producers there. I'm sure they must have known. But it was all shrouded in a lot of secrecy. So That's much secrecy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. It's really cool. Yeah. So there so much secrecy that when I arrived to rehearse, I could not get out of the car that I was in, and um, and I couldn't drive myself there. I had to be driven there, and and I had to drive up. And they came to the car and they gave me a visor, and they <laughs> gave me a sweatshirt that said "Don't talk to me." And, <laughs> and can I get one of those? <laughs> yeah, and I and I put on. They had to put the hood on. I had to put on black gloves. Mm-hmm. And, then, and this is me. I like nobody knows who I am anyway. But I'm like putting on the visor, so you can't see. Like you can't see my face. There's like two little eye areas, like where you can look through. But it's a it's a full thing. And we got out and walked into our our very secluded trailer uh, that just had you know snail a picture of snail on the outside, and then the windows were all. Uh, duvetine with black duvetine up so you couldn't see in and you couldn't see out uh, the windows of the trailer that I was in. It was crazy. The, the funny thing is is that you're probably more more so than most of the other guests used to that sort of thing, being like completely covered, not being able to yeah. see very well. Yep. Don't talk and to usually, me. Talk to the, yeah, talk usually, to the character. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. And usually very anonymous anyway. I'm usually mm-hmm. very anonymous. Sure, of course. Um, and, but I should say, you know, we before we got to that point, uh, Joe, there was, there were, I mean, this was weeks and weeks and weeks in the making. It was months, months in the making. Yeah. Really. I mean, it has to and be it, back so and much forth. that goes into with, it. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of stuff having to do with, you know, Disney and Fox because they're two separate entities and they had to kind of work out the arrangements, which is, you know, very typical. And then there was of course song choice, like what songs uh, would the snail sing? And so I got this, uh, I got a playlist, a, a Spotify playlist from them at one point, and it had probably 30 songs on it. And I just went through all of the different songs, listening to the different songs, and I would kind of pick out a couple that I thought were, you know, potentials. And then those, of course, had to be vetted by the Muppet Studio, whether or not those were approved or not. So it was a very complicated procedure uh, just to pick songs, just to pick one song, let alone two. And we did pick two songs. Right, yeah, and so. there was an interview. So you sang uh, You Make My Dreams by Hall Notes, and then there's an in, in an interview, I don't know if it's you or, or PR folks who mentioned uh, I'm a Believer was your second song. That's right. Um, this might, I mean, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but this might uh, be a, a spoiler for the making, <laughs> the making of this show. But, like, if you only chose two songs, did you kind of know that you were going to be out in the first two days, or was it like, if we make it past two days, I'll pick more songs? No, no, there was a third song option that was in the on that was in the hole, you know. So uh, I'm a believer was on deck, and it, no, I mean it is all legitimately a very legitimate singing competition, uh, to the point that like right before we were starting the show, uh, an executive producer and somebody from Fox came into the the trailer and they said, we just need to let you know that this is an official, you know, competition and, you know, kind of went through some rules with me and that's, et cetera. So, you know, it's, it's very, very legit. Yeah. So yeah, sure. There. There's like laws about this stuff, about these, yeah. these game shows and competition shows and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You can't fake it. That's uh, right. So the snail. So, okay. So you said that they, they had already been developing the snail before like the costume itself, before you mm-hmm. got to the show. Um, by the time you got there, was there was there any time for you to have any input about like, well, if I'm being going to be a puppeteer, like people just don't know, you know, what, what puppeteers yeah. need for, for that kind of thing. So were you able to like kind of put your own thumbprints on that at all? A little bit, yes. So the snail was built onto an electric wheelchair, which was not particularly easy to move. Uh, just and and it ultimately ended up being just me moving it, just a little like a little joystick that would. Up, forward, backward, right, left. So you're really you're really driving it. There's not like someone off camera radio yes. controlling this thing. Wow. Yeah, we actually had they had a radio control option because at first I was like, I don't know if I can do, I don't know if I can sing and move around the stage and do the things that I needed to do. 
And then it ultimately, it ended up, we tried that and it was a little scary because he sometimes, the guy operating it couldn't, there was a connection, you know, there's distance between where I was and where he was. And and also then I did feel wildly out of control. (laughs) Even though I was not really moving, but puppeteers like to have control. So, yeah. Yeah. So luckily, uh, in advance of me even arriving in LA, Bill Beretta, our, the Muppet captain uh, uh, for Muppets, uh, he had been in conversations with the production team, with the, the costume team, and he had kind of talked to them about what, what would be good for me. And so when I got there and I sat in the seat, and I had told them ahead of time, I said, can I see out the, where do I see out? And they said, you can see out the hat, you can see out that. And so that's where my head was. My head was in the hat of the snail. Gotcha. And there's a little viewfinder there. And I said, I love to have a monitor because that's how I work. I need yep. to see a monitor here. So they they were very gracious and they found a monitor for me. They hooked it up to inside the inside the snail. They even cut out a little bit of the snail shell to make it bigger so that I could actually look down. Because before I couldn't I couldn't get my head. I could just get my head out of the out of the hole. And I wanted to look down, so they widened this hole for me, so I could look down and look at the monitor and steer the <laughs> the wheelchair, right? Get it in position, and ultimately, because it didn't move as as smoothly as I really wanted it to, because I was thinking like, oh, we could do like a spin, and we could move over here and move over there. Couldn't do any of that because it just it took it was so. Uh, it just wouldn't move. It just right, it's just it a it wheelchair. Go. It's not. This is not a like a R two D two dolly. I don't even know what you yeah. call something like that. Yeah. It's not In my for... head, I was picturing like it, I'll be able to do all kinds of cool things and it'd be fun, but it just wasn't that. It wasn't made for that, and it didn't work that well in this particular application. So I could only like push it forward and go click, and it would <laughs> move forward, and then it would stop and go click. And I'd have to click it, and it would move backwards. It doesn't really lend itself to dancing. It does not. So (laughs) thankfully, there were dancers there. And on that first day, uh, once I did get in it, and they put the monitor in there, and um, uh, they had dancers. We went out, and we rehearsed both numbers. We rehearsed uh, Make My Dreams Come True. And then we also rehearsed I'm a Believer. Waste uh, of time. In the the (laughs) event. I know, waste of time. In the event that I would move on. So they shoot one show per day. And, uh, and I always was curious about like, well, how does the audience vote? How do they vote? And I think it does say ultimately on there, I've seen something where on online or maybe it was on the show that they have an at home audience Mm. of huge mass singer fans and they watch, uh, like a closed circuit streaming something. I'm sure they're streaming somewhere and they are the ones that are kind of choosing their favorites. Interesting. So yeah. as they go along. So along with then the panel, they choose their favorites as well. So that's the snail. The snail, um, oh, it was just, so it was me moving it. Kermit was not inside mm-hmm. with me when I was, I've seen some I things was actually in there. Curious. Like, Is he in there? <laughs> he was not in there. It was just me. My head was in the hat. Um, and I had a monitor, but there was nothing else, you know. Uh, so... Uh... To, to be able to perform Kermit later on during the reveal, so if you're in the head, you kind of had to, like, duck down and get into the shell. Is that is that accurate? In theory, yes. Like, yeah. that's what they wanted me to be able to do, but I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. I just couldn't physically, because the chair was like a chair I am in right now. Mm-hmm. And so I had to, like, I couldn't, like, the, the top was right here, and I couldn't even get my hand in yeah. to get it out of right. the, you know, so it was... It didn't work. So I said, well, if I am the person that is uh, eliminated first, if Kermit is eliminated first, can we remove, can we just take the shell and bring the shell out, removing it from the uh, from the wheelchair? And so that's what they did. So what happens is, here's the, maybe, the, I hope this is okay, but this is what happens. Too late. <laughs> so, We're already doing it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when... The person is eliminated. Everybody else leaves the stage and they go off and, you know, chuckle a little bit. And I silently cry (laughs) inside the snail. And then (laughs) what happens is we stop. And this happens with everybody. So you stop down. There's a moment off stage where the person that's eliminated is then put into hair and makeup. Because, you know, they want to come out of there looking 
pretty and yeah. they look nice. I would be like gross and sweaty after singing and dancing and being inside right, that big costume. You, yeah. you definitely are. <laughs> so <laughs> you go back and they, you know, they clean you up and everything. But instead, what they did with me is we went backstage. They, the team who was amazing, removed the wheelchair from the snail, brought the snail out. We had this big black curtain so that the panel couldn't see. We all walked out together. They put the snail back down. I got inside the snail and could sit on the floor on a, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was a half apple that I was on. And I just sat, not, not an actual apple. Yeah, that's right, an uh, apple box for people who don't. Wooden box. Don't yeah, like a wooden yeah. box that I could sit on. So mm-hmm. I sat on that, and then I could I could sit and have my arm up in the air, and Kermit could could pop up through the through the snails, the hole there in the snail. Great. And, and whose idea was it to give Kermit the tiny little microphone? <laughs> uh, that was mine. That was my idea. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, he's got to have a microphone. And yeah, so, he was the one I, singing the whole was, time. Yeah, so, but that was something that they made. I mean, that's not a real microphone. They made that, the prop guys on the show made that the, like, the night before or the night before we said we'd like to have a, we'd like to have a microphone. They brought in an option, which was a real microphone. It just was too big on on Kermit's little head. So I said, you know, if you just had like a wire and you could put some foam around it or something, I think that would do. And they did that. And then our, um, our uh, Wrangler attached it to Kermit's head, and then we were good to go. How weird would it be though if they actually rigged him with a real microphone? You're like, guys, you don't need to. You don't <laughs> need to do that. <laughs> the, the voice doesn't come out of there. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't have that wouldn't have worked. Uh, were you? Uh, did you notice? Well, I think it was while you were singing. So you might not have noticed uh, that uh, at one point Jenny McCarthy says that sounds like Kermit the Frog. I don't yeah, I heard that. that. Yeah, I did. did. I heard it. Did yeah, you go like, oh, summer. no, like they figured it yeah. out? Wow. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing about the whole bit it was that I kept asking along the way. I was like, how much do I change my voice? Do I mm. try to go like just maybe I just sing as me and start there or, or what do I do? And they said, no, we, we want it to be Kermit. We want it to sound like Kermit. Some people just kind of change their voice like 10% or something. And uh, so, I, you know, I was trying to go for some, uh, uh, an essence of something, you know, that felt like Kermit, but also didn't, I don't, it was a, it was an odd thing, you know. Yeah. But it, it's super tricky. And actually it reminds me of um, like way back in, I don't know, 60s, 70s, uh, uh, Jim Henson was on um, What's My Line? And he had all the the the, um, the judges were blindfolded. They couldn't see him, but he had Kermit on his arm. And for every question, he removed, he put on a wig or a hat, and Kermit spoke in a completely different voice, like a like a cowboy or a little girl. So nobody knew that's great. it was Jim and Kermit. At no point did it ever sound like Kermit. Um, oh, that's great. So it's, it's a little bit similar, but, but also, like, yeah. you're not you. You're not there as Matt Vogel former right. Kermit the Frog, it's Kermit. Yeah, so you it's supposed have to, to be Kermit. Like that. Yeah, that's yeah. Tri- it's a tricky balance. Yeah, and so uh, we did We did that. And um, yeah, but I did hear Jenny say that whenever she said it. And that was my big thing. I was like, well, they're going to know who it is. And Michael Steinbach, he was the one who said, he's like, yeah, but this this is like the first time on any show like this that really a fictional character is is going to be the, the the competitor. It's true, you know, and and a lot yeah. of fans like we were we were reading on the reactions afterward. A lot of like like diehard Mass Singer fans were like really upset about that. Of like, oh, now it can <laughs> oh, really? be anyone. Like yeah. now, like like the next one is going to be like uh, unmask, and it's the color purple. <laughs> and that's it. It, it could it's be. Just, <laughs> it could be anyone, anything. Um, and yeah. I mean, I personally love that. Like, how do you keep uh, like upping the ante? Like, what are they going to do next season to be I know the frog. You I know. Can't. Yeah, it is a pretty big. It's a pretty big. Uh, you know, they said it was a game changing season. That's what the whole season is about. It's like this game changing season with all the different things that they have going on. So why not have that be part of it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so how did it feel to be to be voted out first? Oh well, I was going into it thinking I'm definitely going to be <laughs> voted out first. <laughs> That's what I kind of went into it with that in my mind, not thinking I'm going to, you know, try to intentionally be voted out. But I heard some of the other people singing and I thought, uh, there's some legit singers here and um, that's OK. You know, this is the, the the value of it is not necessarily being I mean, first. It sucks going home first, but yeah. for anybody. Right. Yeah. But 
the the value of it, just that it's the first out and it's Kermit the Frog, there's something kind of that really, I think, for the show, in the eyes of the show, really pops for them, certainly, because then that gets more eyes on the show, oh, probably. Oh, for sure. They right? got so much good press out of that. Yeah. So, yeah. so in the end of the day, I was like, I was disappointed, of course, because ha- had I come back the next day, then we would have shot a show that day and we would have done I'm a Belie- Believer and then we would have... I think there was probably a day off and then I would have come back a third day. And then like we had like planned into what if you come back the next time there'd be a week off and then you'd come back another time. And, and keep in mind, Joe, like I'm traveling to LA from the East coast. You got to fly there. You got to, you know, I put on like two masks and, you know, a, a shield and I don't know, a big f- flame retardant <laughs> suit. <laughs> I didn't do that, but but then I had to go to a hotel and quarantine there for yeah. three or four days. Like, that's it. You can't – there's nothing you can do. You just got to sit there and wait and be mm-hmm. tested, get COVID tested several times, and then, you know, see what happens and fly home. So there was a, it was a lot of, like, nothing to then suddenly be a lot of things happening, you know, right. doing the show. So it's probably for the but best before, that maybe you, you got to – you know, work for, for a little bit. And then it's like, you're not going back and forth and quarantining over and over and over again. So yes, which is silver lining, I guess. Right. I guess so. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. But I would like to say, you know, there was talk about how we were going to reveal Kermit because, you know, you take the, usually you take the the mask off and there's the person's face. And we were, as I was thinking about it and I, I just thought in that moment before I said, why don't, what if they take the mask off, they take the hat off, and there's nothing there? There's nobody there. And that might be a moment, too, for the judges to be, or the panel to be like, what, what's happening? Which is exactly what happened. I was so yeah. happy that Perfect. that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and Nisi Nash kind of came up and looked in and said, wow, there's something in there, which was even better. And I told the stage manager, I said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to come up until, and I had the line cut. I, I said, I'm not going to come up until I see the panel kind of freaking out and then it comes back to Kermit and then I'll put his hands up and then oh. he'll come up, which I yeah. was so happy how that turned out. Other it looks so good. Kermit's little <laughs> other hands. than his crazy bent arm, but the hands look great. <laughs> and nobody uh, was you know, looking at only... his arm. Don't worry about it. And it was like a half a second, but you know, those are those things you can't do it again. It's, this is the moment you're, yeah. you, you can't fake that surprise again. So I was very happy that that's how we got to reveal him. You know, yeah, that's it great. Felt good to do that. I love it. Uh, I, were you uh, were you at all involved with um, them creating the clues, the, the the clue segments? No, that was Jim Lewis, mm. who's our Muppet writer. And you know, I mean, it's some there's some pretty dense clues in there. If you're you know if you're not an uber Muppet fan, there's like a Muppets from Space reference and a, tre- a Muppet Treasure Island reference. Those are all like kind of deeper cuts, I think, for the average Muppet fan. And one person said, oh, that teddy bear is for Ted. And that totally put everybody's mind on one track of Ted. So yeah. that and the, and the talk show sec, uh, the sets put yes. them on the, on the, like the Jimmy Kimmel, uh, yep. uh, Jay Leno yeah. track. Yeah. They were way off. <laughs> they were way off. But, you know, this was a, this was a crazy, uh, crazy venture to have, you know, this frog be the guest, be the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the contestant. Well, and you don't want to make it easy. Like that, there's no fun in that. No, and I don't think any of the clues for any of the contestants are are particularly easy. I think when you go back and you look at them, and you go, "Oh, now I get it." But yeah. I think initially, it's it's hard. Uh, did you uh, did you get to like after your reveal? Did you get to like actually interact with with the judges and, and stuff like that? Now that you you've, only you've, a you've little, yeah, only a tiny little bit because they were you know the show was done. They took me out of it, and um, I did get to wave. They kind of waved at me as they were going away, and you know they were all so nice. They were they you know said thank you, and they were they they were so happy to have Kermit there. I think Ken Jung in the middle of it was like he's the the biggest star we've had on the show, which is yeah. you know I don't that's a pretty big thing to say. Uh, there was something that was uh, that I'm what was it that I was going to say? Oh, Jen, like the whole interview when he's revealed is so much longer. You know, they cut it down to very minimal stuff. There was a lot of back and forth between uh, Jenny and Kermit 
And, um, yeah, I mean, there was just some fun back and forth between them and, and the panel. They were all so, so nice and so complimentary and really happy to have Kermit there. That's great. I'm, I'm, I hope that they release that stuff because that, that sounds like gold. Um, it was fun. And I, I was wondering if Ken Jeong would, was going to say something like, like, I should have known. I was in a Muppet movie. <laughs> <laughs> he did not. He didn't. He, he did. Ken, no, you missed no, it. No, I didn't. Missed your opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I'm assuming that you noticed uh, after the fact uh, the uh, the little title that when, when Kermit pops up, that it comes up uh, showing his name, it says Oscar winner, uh, which is not true. Yeah, it's a Yet. little bit of a stretch. It's Yet. a little bit of a stretch. I guess I wonder. I mean, I guess that obviously has to do with Rainbow Connection. Well, Rainbow Connection that, was nominated. Didn't oh, win. no, but it didn't win. That's right. So yeah. what in the heck is uh, that Man or about Muppet then? Won. Man or Muppet. Oh, Brett Man McKenzie. or Muppet, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Kermit still, has yeah, presented at the Oscars. I, I think what yeah. confused them, one of the clues in, in the clue segment was Kermit has, has appeared on the Oscar stage or something like that. Yes. He's presented. Which is he's true. sung Rainbow Connection. Very true. But he never, he himself. And he won. never won it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know. He did win, uh, I think he won a Fred Award <laughs> on the Muppet Show. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe that's what they were Which thinking. Is, no. That could be. Totally that. Uh, would you uh, would you go back? Would you do it again with a, with a different character if they asked? Oh, sure, but I, think, I mean, yeah, absolutely. But I think once you've dipped into that well for the, you know, right? I think you know you got to look for something. But else you know to do. what would throw them off is to do it again. <laughs> they never see it coming. Right. That's right. Come back the very next week as a completely different character. Yeah, uh, that would show them. What if they did a season where they were all Muppets, and by the end they're just like, <laughs> I don't know, man, uh, uh, 80s yeah. robot, like maybe. <laughs> Although Uncle yeah, Dudley be, would be terrific be on this show, I he, think. He would be fun. Yeah, he might he be fun as fun. one of the panelists, too. Oh, uh, that would be fun. You know? Mm. I, yeah. Have some fun you, should, uh, you should find someone to pitch that to Fox. To yeah, a panel, we'll do that. A Muppet panel. <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Um, are you, uh, you going to keep watching the show to see who, who else was on there with you? I mean, I have some... I, oh, and I, I didn't. I do not know who anybody else was. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like you, you were kept like, separate from them. They would have been kept separate from, separate from you. Absolutely. Like even when somebody would say, "Oh, uh, Russian dolls coming through," we had to like step into <laughs> into a into another room, uh, and they had to do the same when I was moving through. It was yeah. it was very shrouded in secrecy. So I don't really have a, I have some thoughts about a couple, but that's only really gleaned from. Stuff I've seen on the internet, yep. and also Bill Beretta uh, texted me about one of them. He's like, "I think this is." Blah, blah, blah. I think it's the I one I'm thinking of. I what think is I, it? Do, can you I? Can say you know, it. I can say. No, yeah, why not? I don't know. Why not? Yeah, so because I, I, I don't I watched, know. Okay, so let me. I'll, I'll preface this by saying my mother loves the show, uh, and she she was like <laughs> texting me to be like, "Oh my god, did you see?" And uh, <laughs> she was first of all uh, upset because you. You were voted off first, and she was really strong. She strongly believed the raccoon should be voted <laughs> off first. She okay. did not like the raccoon. So she right. said, "Who is it? I have to know." And so I went online. I went on YouTube, and they they helpfully put all the clue segments up there. And even mm-hmm. like with the modulated voice, within two seconds, I'm like, "That sounds like Danny Trejo." <laughs> I think that's Danny Trejo. And then they're going through the whole clue thing, and I'm like. Yeah, all that fits. That's Danny Trejo. And then he, I watched the song. That sounds like Danny Trejo. I think it's Danny Trejo. <laughs> uh, well, that's what Bill texted me. He's like, is the raccoon Danny Trejo? And I'm like, I have no idea. I don't legitimately know because I wasn't allowed to see or talk or move or know who anybody was. So maybe. Crazy. But I did see that. I saw some clue things, some clue uh, interpretations as well. And, that, and one of those was, yeah, like this all lines up. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see soon. Uh, I guess we will. Who knows? The Matt Singer. Uh, is there anything yeah. else that happened on sets or, or behind the scenes that, that you feel like is worth worth sharing? Let me see. Um, gosh, I feel like there is something that I'm missing. Oh, well, you know, after you're done and after you're the guy that's out, you then have to do a lot of post-interview Type mm. stuff with a, with a whole different group of people, and then they come in with their monitor and the camera, and you know set it up outside the snail. And there's like a post interview with Kermit talking about it, and that's all. It's all, you know, Jim Lewis is so he's brilliant. So he provided much of the talk that that Kermit says, and and um, I don't know where I was going with this other than to say, oh, there were two guys in the back. 
the the yeah, two, were they guards. two two old I don't guys know. that were kind of making fun of your parents? <laughs> <laughs> no, these were two young guys, and they were like dressed, you know, like in the sunglasses, and they were the guards, I guess, is what they were. And they walked oh, like out they, with like, like the, the snail. characters are like the security guards who took the the shell. Yes. Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just made it a point to just keep messing with them throughout the interview. Just because they were so stoic, they just didn't move at all. And I, until I got them to crack, I was I was not gonna give up until I got them to crack, and I did. Great. So it was good. It was like, fun. Like uh, the guards at Bungie and Palace. Just like <laughs> right. a smile. Just looking for a little <laughs> smile. Yeah. So it's it was the overall the whole experience was really fun. I didn't tell anybody in my none of my kids knew. Uh, my wife knew that this was happening because you kind of got to tell your wife right, yeah. why you're, you know, why you're going to LA. But none of my kids knew uh, until we sat down to watch it uh, the other night. That's pretty so exciting. Was, what a cool thing. And like, I mean, fun. I know it's, uh, you often have to keep secrets about productions because you're like, mm-hmm. working on a new Muppet thing that the public doesn't know about yet or whatever, but like nothing to this level of secrecy. <laughs> yes, that is true. Yeah, yeah, this that, was there, insane amount of secrecy. There must have been something really fun and exciting yeah. about that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I, I had an alias for the first time, which is crazy. I mean, maybe not for the first time. Maybe I always have an alias. But no, mm. this was the first time I had an alias. It was it's odd. It's super odd. And uh, yeah, and just the level, the inception levels of like you're a performer performing a frog, performing a snail. Yeah. Baffling. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. Well, uh, I mean, I hope we we get more. I don't know if we'll get something quite as as exciting and, and secretive as the Mass Singer from you, but I hope we do get more stuff like this. And you know, obviously, anything that puts the Muppets right in the spotlight of such, especially such a popular show, um, is yeah. just super super great. So yeah. hopefully, we're, we'll get more we're working like on that. something. Working Ooh, on something. There's something the in the. Yeah, there's something right. going on. All right. Well, I'm we'll excited. See how it goes. See what, but you know there is a. I don't know if you know that there is a pandemic going on in the world. I'm, I'm sorry, what? There's a, a oh. pandemic. Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. It's First like time a virus. There's of it. a. <laughs> yeah. So you know who knows, but we'll we'll see. All Fingers right. Crossed. Well, that's a pretty good tease. Um, and whenever that thing comes out, hopefully you and I can do another one of these collaborations because this was super fun. Yeah, be fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. Thanks, Joe. Sure. And thank you to all of you who are watching or listening. Uh, yeah. If you want more of uh, Matt interviewing other people as opposed to being interviewed, you can listen to him on Below the Frame, found wherever you can get podcasts. And, and you want- can go to Tough Pigs for all of the things that are Muppet fan related. And there are tons, they have tons of podcasts there and tons of articles about different crazy things. Right, Joe? They're, they're so crazy. The crazier of uh, things that you do, the crazier our, our, right. <laughs> our commentary is about them. So, <laughs> Which is always a good thing. I it's, think it's, it's always a good. a convenient little marriage between yeah. our worlds. All right. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the internet. Mm-hmm.